Hello again, folks. This is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. Here we are in Adobe Photoshop Elements looking at some photos that we've scanned in as a spread. In other words, with several photos on the scanner table at the same time. Now, a very nice feature in Photoshop Elements is the ability to divide scanned photos. Look at this. Pretty cool. Look under Image. There it is, divide scan photos, and it breaks them up automatically into three separate files. Is that not cool? Does a really good job at it too. So there's one, there's two, there's three. Now this particular photo we had on the scanner, we had it vertical when it's actually horizontal. So we'll rotate that by going up to image, rotate, and rotate it left 90 degrees. So we've got three pretty cool pictures. Let's concentrate on this one right now. I'm just going to enlarge it by grabbing onto the corner. And then once I've got it to the size I want to work with, I can control zero or command zero and the picture will fill the frame. Now, I'm not sure what the resolution of this picture is. I like to keep my photo resolution uh, for photos that I save on my computer at about 2000 or 2500 pixels each direction. So I'm going to go to the image menu. I'm going to select resize image size and right now you can see it's actually pretty large so much so that we're seeing some of the graininess of the original photo before I change this resolution up here in pixels I'm going to change the actual depth or the pixels per inch doesn't really matter if you're working with online photos but if you're going to print out the photo 600 is pretty deep you might see that in an art magazine or an architectural magazine generally you can go down to about 150 or 200 for your resolution. Uh, these are just floating numbers. Don't worry, we haven't changed anything yet. I'm going to change the width. Remember, it was originally over 3,000. We're going to change it to about 2,500. So that's pixels, remember. Don't worry about document size. You can see that we still got a pretty big document there, 16 by 10. Don't worry about any of that. All of that is going to change soon. Make sure, whenever you resize, that you have scale styles, constrained proportions, and resample image all selected. And then, if you're making it larger, which you don't want to make it too large, because you're just adding pixels where there are no pixels. But if you're going to make it smaller, make sure you select by cubic sharper. That's going to give you a nice, sharp, reduced picture. So we're going to bring it down to 2,500 pixels. Click on that. And this is a smaller picture. Uh, this probably is closer to, you know, a nice 8 by 10. Uh, still very large photo and one we can use in any video project pretty much with no problems. All right, so how do I clean this up? I got to tell you, first thing I do is I often go to the automatic settings and see how they do. So I'll click on Enhance at the top of the screen and select Auto Smart Fix. See what it does. What it did is kind of bring down the white and the black range and kind of make it a little sharper. We've, we've got some of the grayscale in the background here looking pretty good. We've got a problem where we've got women in very brightly colored clothes, like this woman is wearing a white dress, while we've got men in very dark suits. We're losing a lot of distinction in there. It's quite possible if I go here to enhance, and I'm just going to try this as an experiment, probably not a good idea. We'll go down to adjust lighting and select shadow highlights. Shadow highlights will lower the brightest uh, whites and bring up the darkest blacks so that you get more of a grayscale range. And if I select that, this will work very well if you had a bird flying in the sky where you can't see the bird because the sky is so bright or somebody sitting in the shadows. Uh, it'll bring people out of the shadows. does not work well in this particular case. All it's going to do is show us more graininess. So I'm going to cancel that option. I think this may be about as good as I can get. I'm going to zoom in by Control Plus or Command Plus. Zoom in a little bit on the faces. And then from the Enhance menu, I'm going to select Color, Skin Tone adjust color skin tone and then using this tool I'm just gonna click on this man's face this did not work out well at all here it suddenly made everything very very blue see there's a before there's after let's reset that we don't like that at all a color temperature it's overcompensating for in this particular case but I can click on his face maybe play with some of these adjustments here I don't think this is going to work well for us at all. So I'm not going to use this tool either. This is very often how I work. I quite often I'm working with um, 
several tools to try to find the one that does it best. Now we worked with some of the automatic settings. We can probably do some things here with some uh, manual settings. I want to show you one cool thing that works very well for white balance, although white balance is not a big issue here. We've got a woman in a white dress. That gives us an advantage. Uh, just want to try this once more. Go to Enhance, go to Adjust Lighting, and select Levels. I've showed this tool before. Now this tool can actually set your white balance for you if you just select one of these samplers. This one is for black, this one is for gray, this one is for white. I'm going to select the white point and just click somewhere on this woman's dress and see what happens. It actually did a pretty good job. I'm going to select the black point too and select this man's suit. And very subtle changes, but it really balanced the white balance for this picture very nicely. Now there is some just snapshot graininess to it because it was taken indoors that I don't particularly like, but otherwise we've got a very nice photo from our scan. Now if you want to know more about how to use this program, how to work with color, uh, how to balance white balance, uh, how to get skin tones right, you want to check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. If I know every single thing about Photoshop elements, you'll want the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. That book is available at Amazon.com. And I'm the guy who wrote the book. I hope to see you again real soon. Take care.